Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, and thank you for subscribing. I'm up to 2,079 right now. That's kind of exciting. And by coming and looking at the numbers here in the Arizona market, you can become an expert in the Arizona real estate market. And imagine what a hit you would be at all these holiday cocktail parties. Even just sitting around the kitchen table at Thanksgiving, when you hear somebody say, have you seen what's going on in real estate? You're right there with the numbers. Now, you'll probably end up sitting at a table by yourself and your family will completely ignore you, but at least you're armed with information. So welcome, welcome. Uh, running at altitude says weather must be fantastic down there this time of year. This is my favorite time of year living in Arizona. It is absolutely incredible. 80 degrees. I took the trailer out with my middle son um, Saturday and we just went up to the town of Wickenburg and just chilled. Uh, it was actually a pretty crummy RV park. Uh, it looked good online, but we got there and it was terrible <laughs> right next to a busy road. So uh, I'll wash that. I'll scratch that one off the list. So what's going on um, today? We have 7,734 listings on the market. That's a little higher for Monday. Normally we're about 7,400, but the seven day moving average got a little interesting. They uh, popped up to 4,200, 4,213 listings come on the market in the past week with only 3,664 go under contract. That's a difference of 579. That's the largest gap we've had since July with 1,794 price reductions. And here's what it looks like. So you can see the gap here is starting to grow. Now, whether or not it grows, um, you know, who knows? Uh, we're just watching it on a daily basis. Uh, and it's going to be one of those things that as we go into the holidays um, is the gap between home sales and price and uh, inventory going to be more or less. And historically, it ends up being less. So we're going to look at that. I'm going to jump in and just make a couple comments right now because we're seeing a lot of stuff about Zillow. And the word fire sale is coming up on all those YouTube thumbnails. Now, a fire sale to me means that you've just, you got a reduce the prices to unprecedentedly low prices and you got to get rid of it. It's like selling your car. It's worth $5,000. I got to sell it for 2000 bucks. I got to get rid of it. In Glendale, there's a home out there and this is typical of what they did here. Zillow paid $612,532 for this home and the actual market value, I ran the numbers, was about 549000 So they overpaid. Then, get this, they listed it for six hundred and five thousand nine hundred, they paid six twelve. They listed it for six oh five. Now, what is the reasoning for that? So keep in mind they paid way over market value to begin with. So everybody's going, well, Zillow saw all this data and they're getting out because house prices are going down. No, they paid too much. Your five thousand dollar car you went, they came in and offered you seven. So they listed it for 605 so right off the bat they were intent on losing money on it then this week they reduced it to $539,000 back down to about the market level actually 539.9 so you're looking at 540 compared to 549 so they got it down to a realistic level to me that is not a fire sale that's let's just jump back to reality and when you look at what redfin is saying they said, you're just force feeding yourself potentially toxic assets. Redfin CEO remains cautious about iBuying's future. And he goes on to say, uh, and unlike his colleague, colleagues at Offerpad, Kelman expects that the shifting conditions in the real estate market will create more challenges for I buyers rather than fewer. Largely due to rising interest rates, lower rates allow I buyers to borrow capital at a lower cost. So if a company has trouble offloading a property backed by debt, then it won't put a damper on its balance sheet. However, rising interest rates will not only make the debt leverage purchases more risky, but also reduce home buyer demand. While he believes the housing market is simply balancing, he views that as more favorable to Redfin's brokerage business than his home flipping division. So Redfin barely dips their toes into the home flipping business. And they're saying, we're not gonna rely on that for us making money. Uh, we're gonna rely on just our mortgage, I mean, our uh, our brokerage business. A uh, couple questions here, uh, running at altitude says, how long do you think the seller inventory will be absorbed by the market? And what is the predominant price of these iSeller homes? Uh, for, for Zillow, probably be done in about 10 days. Those houses will be gone. I mean, you see the numbers here, we're fluctuating by two to 500 on a, 
you know, a week. So that, um, you know, they could, in my opinion, they could give away all those homes and it would not affect our market. Zillow can just say, you know what? These are all free this week. We're out of here. And it won't affect the numbers. We won't see it. Uh, Jackie says, our buyer and seller activity is picking up quite a bit again. Yeah, we're going to look at a couple charts here. It's getting interesting. As the medium price data charts somewhat unreliable due to these homes selling over market value, nope, the number's not big enough. Zillow's numbers are not big enough to move anything. A uh, couple of, uh, let's see, I want to jump right into the numbers here, and then I want to talk about some first-time home buyer myths, uh, where, where mortgage rates are, and then I'm going to show you a really cool home here in Phoenix. So I'm going to talk about the Cromford Market Index for a second, and it's proprietary numbers. But what they're seeing is, uh, they note that the higher priced areas in the Northeast Valley are doing much better than usual, occupying three of the top four spots. Paradise Valley was the strongest mover, gaining 15% over the past month. Fountain Hills has cooled down, but is still hot enough to occupy the number one spot. Well, with temperatures back down to pleasant levels, and we just talked about that, it looks like we're going to see a lot of buying interest from out of state especially from those states to make Arizona home prices look very cheap. Now, as you look here, anything over 100, 100 is considered a balanced market. You've got Fountain Hills sitting here at 642 in the Cromford Index. That's incredibly high. Compare that to Maricopa down here with 216. And we're going to take a peek at Maricopa's numbers. So where is our inventory right now? Well, you know, back here, it looked like it was going to go up and we would pass, blow past 2020. But now here we are, we're getting our regular seasonal slowdown here. Happy holidays. Going to start coming down. I don't see it going up and it's coming down there. Now, I did see it come up a little bit this week. So, but it's going to have to come up aggressively to, to change this. So, but what's going on in Maricopa? Let's take a look. You know, they used to have like only 100 homes on the market down there. And I checked it this morning and they have 350. So I feel that that's probably because there's so much new construction down there that resale's a little tougher. And the chart is saying that that's what's going on in Maricopa. Look at this. Back here, we hit 2020 levels of 121 active listings back in June 13th and then just rocketed to the moon after that. So Maricopa, you got a lot of choices now. There's a lot of homes for sale. So they're slowing slowing down in sales. Uh, they're still above normal. Uh, and there, there are more choices in Maricopa due to all the new construction. Here's the Cromford Market Index. Remember, 100 being considered a balanced market, which is way down here. And we're muddling along right now with... 2020 and we're starting to climb up which means inventory is starting to slow down a little bit as we get into the holidays the higher end markets are starting to take off now as we get into that season and the Cromford market index is going to start climbing we look at homes selling for over list price and we're still almost at 50 percent we're at 47 percent you get down by the price ranges between three and four hundred is the one that's Got the biggest beat down. 58.4% of homes are going for over their list price with an average of $10,100. Now that used to be 15,000 to 20,000. Um, and it varies by home. So you never know what you're gonna run into. And you can see that it's pretty active and you can generally count on that over half of the homes out there in our market are still going for over list price. So absorbing Zillow's Inventory is a walk in the park, so not going to affect much of anything at all. And especially interest rates um, actually edge down. So you had um, the Fed chairman talk last week about um, tapering. See, we're at 3.09 versus 3.12. So the Fed chairman comes out and says they're going to start pulling back mortgage-backed securities by about $5 billion a month. The market had already priced that in before he talked. So it didn't move the needle. Then they passed the giant infrastructure bill on Friday. That didn't even move the needle. So they've already got those numbers baked in. So um, no big changes there. Found an interesting article this morning on six first-time homebuyer hopes and dreams that are completely delusional today. Uh, that's got to break your heart. What are they? Number one, your dream home will have everything you want. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. There's time to find a mortgage after you find the house. No, 
don't do that. There's nothing worse than getting a hold of an agent saying, I got to get this house. Are you pre-qualified? Well, no, I can do it today. No, you can't. You've got to get a lender before that if you're going to be competitive because the lender needs to see as much as you can. And there's a difference between pre-qualified and pre-approved. If you can get even through the underwriting process of being qualified for a loan, now that's almost as strong as cash. You are in the catbird seat there. So get that done first. You can handle the home buying process on your own that you might Many people do, uh, but if you're a first time home buyer, um, you're going to be pulling your hair out. There's so much stuff that comes up. The seller will fix any issues that come up in the home inspection. No, they won't. They don't have to in this market. I see it time and time again. I saw it two weeks ago. I saw it last week. I'm right in the middle of it. The inspection period is the most stressful time of purchasing a home. And, uh, um, it's the time when the math disappears and the emotion comes in. You can get down to with, where there's a repair at $200 and the seller says no. And the, now the buyer's already spent $600 on an inspection and $500 for an appraisal and they walk away for 200 bucks. That's emotion over math. So um, don't expect, go in expecting the seller to tell you no on everything and be happy and surprised when they go, okay, we'll fix that because it's just not happening in this market. They don't have to do it. The asking price is probably what you'll pay. Well, I just showed you almost 50% of the homes right now are going over list price. Now there's still a ton of people out there that are shooting for the moon, you know, like Zillow. And you can pull some of those back, but you have to really take a look at how much activity is at the house. And we can see that. We can see how many people are going in and looking at the home. And chances are it's probably going to go for over list. So you just got to be prepared for that and know that going in. Number six, can't find the right house. It's easy to build one instead. I got a friend in California moving out, a co-worker uh, moving out here from California. I saw, shot him a text the other day and I said, hey, are you in Arizona yet? And he goes, no, they're not uh, going to be done until February. He bought it in July, folks. So we'll just get into a new build. He bought it in July and he is still waiting. So um, that's a tough one. It's taking so long. Now, I read an interesting article yesterday that I really want to take a deeper dive into. And she's an economist and uh, looks at the housing market. And she said that in Phoenix in particular, um, we're overbuilding when she looked when we look at permits and stuff she said there's there's too many homes coming in there are too many houses out there that are rentals and airbnbs and that equation could change and we could easily get ourselves into an overbuilt situation real quick and one of the things she pointed out she goes the only thing that's keeping us from doing that is the supply side problem they can't get materials and they can't get labor that's what is keeping builders from going nuts and overbuilding like crazy. There may be some truth to that. I want to dig into that a little bit. We have another question here. It says, can you update on $1 million properties in Scottsdale? Well, let's take a look at the Cromford Index and see what's going on there. Bear with me for just a moment. We will look at, uh, let's see, cities. We're going to click off of all here. It gets a little, gets a little wonky, so bear with me, folks. I'm going to get off of all, and then we're going to go down to Scottsdale right there. Click on that, and we're going to see what's going on by prices. So over 1 million, there's 95 that sold the past 30 days. 28.4 went over list price, and that's always a tough one to, to say, too, because um, if you look at over 1 million, there's 27 homes, and the average over list is 50,000. That could have been the one home got... $200,000 over their list price and the rest went at or below. So don't put a lot of teeth into this. That's just an average. So when you're doing an average with only 27 homes, it only takes one to throw the whole chart off. But that's that's what's going on. 27 homes sold for over 1 million, 21 over 900,000. Between 300 and 400,000, 56 homes sold. But get this, only 6,000 over list when the average around the valley is 10,000. Now, if you're looking for something that's over 1 million, check this out. This is the Frank Lloyd Wright Circular House up in Scottsdale. 
and it's for sale. It's one of the last residential designs of Frank Lloyd Wright before his death in 1959. Um, I don't have the asking price in front of me, but I think it's cool. And uh, some people might go, yuck, this thing's awful. But I could see myself in this living room with that view. Now, it's been on the market a year. And according to the realtor, one of the reasons it's been on the market so long is it didn't have a garage. It doesn't have a garage. So you'd have to put one in. Why doesn't it have a garage? Because Frank Lloyd Wright didn't like garages. He said, those just create clutter. So <laughs> people, uh, let's see, finally closed and it was that list. Oh, great. I got one KCH looked up the data for me. Well, sorry, folks, this is no longer available. Holy cow, look at that. So uh, this is, I like looking at some of these high-end homes. It's kind of fun, kind of fun to dream every time I think I'm going to win the lottery. Um so he didn't put it in a garage because he said garages just create clutter. Well, whoever's going to buy this house is probably owns a couple nice Teslas and maybe a Corvette. They are not going to park them outside. So everybody have a fantastic day and take on the week and I'll see you again. Mm -hmm.